am I Reister or am I wrong? This is the intersection where sports, business, society, pop culture meet. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, fire around noon p.m. Pacific time. Uh, Facts only. Check your feelings at the door. This ain't the place for the left, for the right. Snowflakes, social justice warriors, no BS. Keep it 100. So we got three uh, big things up today. First, well, one of the things is the NBA snitch hotline. I am 100% all in on that. Uh, Asheville reparations, the right thing to do. Um, And the NFL has an MLB-sized COVID problem. Everybody thinks the NFL is going to start. Everything's going to go over well, but that's not the way it's trending right now. You guys can send me an email, uh, gwpodcast at unafraidshow.com. Make sure you tell a friend about it and, you know, subscribe and share and all of that. So first thing up, first thing we're going to talk about is the, is the uh, Asheville reparations. Huge thing. If you haven't uh, heard about it, what it is, the Asheville, uh, North Carolina, their city council has apologized for the city's role in the history of slavery, discrimination, and denial of basic liberties to black residents and voted to provide reparations to them and their descendants. Okay, so what does that mean? They said that it is simply not enough to remove statues. Black people in this country are dealing with issues that are systematic in nature. So they passed the resolution not to mandate direct payments, but instead they will invest in areas where uh, black residents face disparity. And I love this. I think that this is intelligent because generational wealth is something African-Americans were denied through economic and regulatory discrimination. But here is the here is the issue that people are going to draw a problem with. Because a lot of times when things like this happen, poor white people get pitted against black people. Because poor white people, they say, look, I'm in a I'm in a terrible situation myself. I'm in the mud, brought myself out and all of that. So this will be used and politicized to say, well, well This is unfair treatment to black people. I get it. And yeah, it sucks because things were done differently in history. However, to to move forward out in the world, if you have a problem with your wife, your kids, anything like that, first thing you have to do is to acknowledge the problem, correct the problem, apologize for the problem, and then turn away from it. And that's what is... The acknowledging it sort of had happened, but really fully owning it because our history doesn't really teach it the way it's supposed to be done and all of that. So for years, black people have been talking about, oh, we're supposed to get 40 acres and a mule. 40. That, that's not happening. That ship has sailed. It's too late for that. And truthfully, there are no excuses not to succeed out here in the world for black people. Yes, you may have a harder road. Yes, things may be more difficult, but you have there. If you want it bad enough, you can do it. Um, And but a lot of it had to do with the redistribution. Well, the distribution of wealth, whether it's school districts not being the same because in poor neighborhoods, urban neighborhoods, uh, the, the funding isn't the same. And that creates educational opportunities, especially when st- when a lot of schools still require the SAT. Uh, rich kids have an advantage. People who go to better schools have an advantage. All of that. Uh, there's redlining, voter suppression, all sorts of things that have caused the need for reparations. And if you change the the way that uh, the uh, people who can uh, get loans for businesses. Uh, can buy houses, all of that, you are going to change the future. But then there are other people who will tell you, well, George, uh, black black families, they they need to get themselves together, family first, all of that. 100% agree. Because black two-parent homes, granted, people, there are people who succeed without it. But true, but when you look at the statistics, suicides are lower, incarceration rates are lower. 
educational opportunities are, are higher because you're more likely to have professionals. So yes, but then when you look back at why these things happened, because families were ripped apart during slavery and ripped apart and our history is gone. Uh, you have Asian Americans who have history. They know their grandfathers, great grandfathers, their legacy. They know their customs and traditions, Italian Americans, uh, wherever that people are from, they understand that. But my history is, is uh, Nathan's hot dog eating contest. That's all I know. I mean, in terms of very Americana, don't have cultural traditions like other people have, which is a big deal. Um, and then there are issues of, of mass incarceration, all of that, that we don't even have to get into because uh, I'll put a link in the description about, uh, about incarceration rates and sentencing and all of that. But I love what Asheville did. I think it was smart. I think it was intelligent. And I think it was right. Um, the next thing up is the NF, the NBA. They're coming back. They're in the bubble. They are in Orlando. Big deal, right? Yeah, sports are coming back. Woohoo! Um, the problem is you can't get uh 300 dudes to stay on the same page and stay focused on the mission. You got people breaking the curfew, you got people breaking the bubble for food, flying in out of town work. Oh, if you oh, if you don't know what flying out of town work they, means, that's a that's a uh that's a sexual situation. That's when you have someone flying from a different place coming in to come visit you and come to come hang out. And mind you, the NBA put in a snitch hotline. I am a person who is not in favor of snitching on a normal basis, but when you are starting to affect my livelihood, I got to hit you where it hurts. And the NBA needs to find these dudes, have find the hell out of these dudes, like the Major League Baseball is doing in Canada. $750,000 fines. Well, but it's actually from Canada with the Canadian Quarantine Act. If any of the Blue Jays players break the quarantine, break their bubble. I'm not mad at that because these players are putting in jeopardy the future salary cap, their future money, other players' future money, people's jobs, livelihoods. You are a professional. If you can't restrain yourself in the bubble, guess what? Get the hell out of the bubble. You need to be somewhere else because jump offs and homeboys coming in is not worth you messing up everybody else's livelihood. That is absolutely asinine and it's stupid, but you know what it is? It signifies a real problem that some of these players can't be alone with themselves. And that is an issue. That's an issue for your life. That's an issue for uh, everything that you have going on. Because if you can't be alone with yourself for a couple weeks, when you can venture out, you're going to get a chance to be around your teammates and practice and all of that. Something's wrong. You have an internal issue that you need to deal with. And I get it, though, because the year that I made the most money I ever made in the NFL. I had people, women, friends, everybody flying in and out all the time. I was rarely alone. But, but I was trying to fill a gap. I was trying to fill a void. And I felt more alone that year than any other time in my whole life. And I had people around all the time, had women around all the time, still wasn't getting myself fulfilled. So that's why I can recognize what these dudes are going through. That's why I say if they can't control themselves, you have to like one of those act like men get treated like men moments. This is where you can get fined. And I don't mind it at all. I think it is, that is going to be the way to ultimately get guys to stay within the bubble, do the right thing, is to cost them money. I'm talking $250,000, $500,000 fines. No excuse for it. It well, Oh, well, it was an emergency. Call the line and say, yo, I got an emergency. Can you figure this out for me? Or I got to go do this, but just stepping out. Cause you want to go pick up some food or you want to go pick up some tail. Nah, nah, playboy. You messing with the money. You got to get fined. Not mad at that. Uh, that's the way to do it. Last thing we got up today is the NFL 
has a well, hold up, real quick, back to it. So, so Shams, uh, Sh- Sham Sharania of the Athletic, he said that the anonymous hotline has received multiple tips reporting violations of health and safety protocols at the league's bubble, and everybody is blaming Chris Paul. I think this is hilarious because Chris Paul is the president of the Players Association. And you know, he'd be snitching on dudes for, for not tucking their shirts in. But I don't blame him. I don't blame him for this. I am all in on the snitching. I think this is the right thing to do. It's the optimal scenario. And because there's too much at stake. And some young guys can't, and even some old guys, can't put that in perspective. And if you can't put it in perspective for yourself, we got to put it in perspective for you. Sorry, buddy. Um, the last thing up, the NFL PA ha- and the NFL have a serious problem when it comes to potentially playing football in the fall. I know everybody thinks that if college football uh, steps out of the way or plays in the spring, pro football is just going to st- step in. No problems asked. No questions asked. Uh, completely false. Completely wrong. Completely false. Completely wrong. The NFL... Well, the the NFL just sent a proposal to the NFLPA asking that 35% of player salaries be put in escrow this year. Huh. That way, in case there is a shortfall, that they can tap into that. NFLPA was like uh, Don Davis told the players on a conference call, we basically told them to kick rocks. Um. That is the optimal scenario. But remember what happened with Major League Baseball. They got in a fight over money. They kept pushing it back, pushing it back. Because with these NFL contracts, the way they work is, with some veterans and guys who have guaranteed money, the second that they step on the field and play one game, money's guaranteed, it's got to be paid. But if they allow them to put the money in escrow, they can keep it and use it how they will. And if I'm the union, I'm not trusting the owners with anything. I mean, like the any escrow deal has got to be collectively bargained. You can't just do it. And after we've seen what the NL- MLB has gone through with testing, NFL players not wanting to wear that face shield because it's hot. Like there, when you put on a shield in front of a football mask, it's hot in there. You can barely breathe. All that, but everybody's like, yeah, 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 just wear a face shield. Yeah, because you never had your ass in a helmet. That's why. It doesn't, just, just the shoehorning in is just, like, people don't realize the actual problems with it. They're like, oh, yeah, I got it. I got a solution. Put a, put a shield in front of them. Yeah, all right. Um, so there's testing. Then there are roster issues and roster problems. Because how do you handle a player who tests positive, whether he gets sick long term, or it will well if he gets sick long term, is this a work related issue? Does he get workers comp? Does he get a year of credited service? Does he get post health career benefits? How does it work for roster spots? Yeah, these are small details, but in negotiations, the small details are what holds you up the most. It's usually not the big points. People can uh, argue about percentage of revenue. Yeah, that's easy to work out. Um, How many preseason games easier to work out. But when it comes down to the minutia, that's what gets into it. And the NFLPA has a huge problem on its hands because they they just wanted to get the CBA done so quickly. And now the pandemic has happened and you find yourself in a pickle, find themselves in a pickle because they rushed to get the collective bargaining agreement done early this spring. Now you have to hope that the league works with you on the back end because once revenue goes down, because it will with no fans in stands or limited fans in stands, now players salaries are going to go down, which because of the salary cap. Oh, they're only going to have so much to spend. It'll go back up in a, in a couple years once stuff goes back to normal, but you're going to be affecting players' livelihoods. 
And maybe, just maybe, if you hadn't rushed to get this done, you would have a situation where uh, you would have more leverage and more power when it comes to uh, negotiating. And you would have an idea of potential pitfalls which are going to come up, which the owners are going to have significant leverage. Uh, Yeah, so football is not back. It is not even close to back. It's further away than you really want to imagine. I know you're going to call me a Debbie Downer. I'm just giving you the facts. I'm not saying it's not going to happen and it can't happen, but the facts are it's further away than you think. Am I Reister or am I wrong? Uh, Let me know in the comments. Hit me on Twitter. Shoot me an email, gwpodcast at unafraidshow.com. Subscribe. Tell a friend about it. Peace out. Catch y'all on Friday. (laughs) 